Knock, knock, Arnold. Can I come in? Ooh, I see you've decided to create a real tropical paradise for yourself. Don't you think the palm tree from the living room is a bit much? All right, here's some more food, drinks, and new friends. Rubber duckies. Have fun, Arnold. How about some beneficial bubbles? Hydro massage can mimic physical exercise such as squats, pull-ups, and push-ups. When vibrating, the muscle fibers contract, thereby increasing in volume. And in just 30 days, they'll reach their maximum strength and endurance level. You, Arnold, oh, lazy one will definitely like it. Arnold, this is the first time I've seen you so happy. I suggest we continue the experiment. I'm going to lock you in the bath for 30 days, but on one condition. I'm turning off the water and leaving you just the food you have right now. Yeah, you probably shouldn't have eaten so much. If you don't get out of the bath for 30 days, apart from bacterial skin infections and your nails peeling, you'll have two options. Either complete dehydration and the loss of 1.3 gallons of water, or hyperhydration, when your body gets much more water than necessary, and which leads to swelling of the brain. Arnold, you're consuming food and water at an alarming rate. Surprisingly, due to your prolonged immersion in water, your skin will become dry and cracked, and it'll become really easy to get a skin infection in such dirty old water. Just one thing, Arnold, please, don't look at your hand. To spend 30 30 days in a bath sipping cocktails, your skin needs to be more like a seal's. After all, they have 20% more subcutaneous fat than humans, which provides excellent waterproofing and protection. But now as a carrier of intestinal parasites dangerous for humans, you're unlikely to be welcome to such a party. Arnold, you really don't resemble a seal at all and are completely unsuited for aquatic life. But on the other hand, your bathroom is now a paradise for plants. Your palm tree has bloomed. Mushrooms are growing on the ceiling, and it seems that somehow wheat has sprouted from your toilet. You have nothing to eat or drink. No, please, Arnold, don't tell me you're planning to drink that water. It's full of gunk and microbes in your hair. Yuck. <laughs> You need immediate hospitalization. You're not going to make it to the hospital. Your heart could stop. You need an emergency blood transfusion to maintain pressure in your circulatory system. During the Vietnam War, coconut IVs were sometimes used to treat the wounded. Amazingly, coconut water is quite similar to human blood plasma. So what do we have? Cola. Okay, let's get to work. But first, you need to get rid of all the gas. If the gas contained in the drink gets inside your blood vessels, it'll literally tear you apart from the inside. Cola contains sugar, glucose. This is a perfect source of fast energy and allows you to really perk up. It seems to have worked. The cola has taken root in your body. But your appearance has changed just a little, buddy. Even your hair has changed color. But on the other hand, you'll be a most welcome guest at any children's party. With so much caffeine in the cola running through your veins, you only have to sleep once every three days. Now, you have much more time than regular people. After all, even professional athletes drink cola for a quick dose of energy. And you can always get a refill at the nearest supermarket. No, stop, you kamikaze nutball. Just one single Mentos could turn you into a surface-to-air missile. Don't worry, it won't ruin your day. Cola even helps combat mild depression. But to be honest, Arnold, cola in your blood is actually deadly. Congratulations, Arnold. You just volunteered for the bulletproof skin test. Wow, you still alive, Superman? So, a successful test. Hey, Arnie, these guys seem pretty happy with the outcome, but they want to up the ante. A grenade launcher fires a grenade from its barrel at a speed of 120 meters per second, and it can pierce 50 centimeters of steel armor. Now we need something more serious. For example, skin made from fullerene. This is the strongest material known to science, an allotrope of carbon, and it's 200 times stronger than the strongest steel. 
Congratulations, Arnie! Your fullerene skin can withstand a rocket-propelled grenade. Which, of course, cannot be said about your brain. The shockwave has turned it into jiggly jelly. But luckily, you're in a super-secret lab. That's right, Arnold! Perfect time to get away! After all, now automatic weapons can't hurt you. In fact, you can't be strangled. And even getting hit by a car won't hurt you. But your strength, Arnie, you little wimp, that hasn't changed a bit. But instead, as I can see, now you've got nerves of steel. But the problem is, Arnold, now you have to hide for the rest of your life so that no one knows that you've got super skin. Wait, what? I see, Arnie. You'll do anything for likes. Well, each his own. Anyway, make sure that stubborn streak of yours doesn't go sideways on you. Even Superman has weaknesses. Did you really think no weapon could get through that skin of yours? Now, just imagine if you had two heads. You'd be way more popular. Your life would be much more interesting. You'd be smarter. And you could finally learn how to ride a bike normally. Look, this is the same guy from the sign. The circus ringmaster. Oh my god. Did that lion actually just swallow the whole two-headed dude? No, actually it seems the heads are unharmed. But what's gonna happen now? Is the big show of the season cancelled? Hey, it seems the manager has noticed you and wants you to be in the cast. But only if you agree to have these two good-as-new heads sewn onto your body. Isn't that what you've always dreamed of? Well, since you agree, I think you should find out more about the upcoming surgery. The first successful head transplantation was done by Charles Guthrie in 1908. He did it on dogs, though. One of the heads was sewn to the neck of a dog's body upside down. In the 1950s, Demikhov achieved full functioning of a second head. He transplanted 20 heads together with the front half of the dogs. Then the head of one dog was transplanted onto the body of another. And then there was a monkey, which, after transplantation, even tried to bite one of the doctors. In 2013, Sergio Canavero announced plans for a human head transplant. The estimated cost was $12.8 million. In 2017, under his leadership, a dead human head was transplanted onto a corpse. Actually, it suits you, Arnold. Now it's time to rehearse your part. I hope you don't screw up and disgrace mm. these beautiful heads. <gasps> You're gonna have to juggle as you ride your unicycle on a springboard through burning hoops. Yay! They don't seem to like you being so stupid, Arnie. Try not to interfere with the professionals managing your body. All that's required of you is to not spoil the performance. The grand premiere. All eyes are fixed on you, Arnold. Today, you are the main part of the show. Fingers crossed, buddy. You're doing great. Just a little more and... Is that Tagaya over there? Did she come to see you? No, no, don't get distracted. Not now, Arnold. What a doofwad. <sighs> By trying to be a gentleman, you disgraced yourself and the Truel huh? brothers. That was the greatest failure this circus has ever seen. Psst. Arnold! Arnold! Wake up! Stop eating in the store! Those vegetables are GMO, genetically modified organisms. This tomato contains a silkworm gene, and your normal everyday cucumber has a 40% similarity to a human from a genetic standpoint. But don't be afraid. GMO isn't scary, and I know just how to prove it to you. Let's genetically modify you, Arnold. It's illegal to do such experiments on human beings. But in 2018, two genetically modified babies were born in China. They were programmed to have immunity to HIV. Now, we're in the Pentagon's tippity-top secret laboratory. They mainly produce GMO soldiers. CRISPR-Cas9 is a new technology that allows the DNA of one organism to be implanted into the DNA of another.
A regular fish was implanted with genes from a bioluminescent jellyfish. Now it's a glowfish. Vegetables are modified for longer storage and better taste. But what about you, Arnold? Do you want to be taller? We can use the Michael Jordan gene. And we'll remove the sweating gene from you, so you stop stinking so much. And meet Arnold 2.0. A new life has begun. Without sweat, people will finally sit next to you on the bus. And your neighbor's grandma will stop calling you a short little redheaded virgin. Now she'll just call you a redheaded virgin. Yes, genetic engineering isn't perfect yet, but it is the future. Designer GMO babies are coming soon. And it'll be possible to remove the cruelty gene from criminals. It's a new stage of evolution. Sweet dreams, Arnold 2.0. Hey. What's going on? Arnold, did you steal all the syringes from the lab? What, you want to inject yourself with the strawberry gene to smell good? And a corgi gene for a perfect butt? Don't do this, Arnold. Stop! Oh, ye gods, what have we done? I was wrong. Genetic engineering is dangerous. Not only for the organism, but for the whole city as well. Are you taking an IQ test? Don't be so tense. You could burst the last remaining piece of your brain. Oh, you got upset and want to show that your intelligence is much higher. You're just fooling yourself. Although, I have an idea. The brain works much better when it receives a lot of nutrients. This can be achieved through more rapid circulation of the blood. A shot of adrenaline will increase your heart rate to 220 beats per minute. And a 40th cup of coffee will provide all 350. Let's see if we've nourished your brain enough. Well... But what if we make your heart contract at a speed of 300,000 times per second? Blood will run through your veins 20 times faster than the speed of sound. Obviously, all your veins and blood vessels will burst instantly, and your heart won't even be able to contract a second time. So, we'll do an upgrade. We'll replace your heart with a motor, and we'll make your blood more viscous. Now, this is a whole different story. In this form, you are a Superman. All processes of the body are accelerated thousands of times. It will be the most productive time of your life. With such a brain, you could create a company more successful than Google or refine Einstein's theory of gravity, advancing humanity hundreds of years ahead. But because of your accelerated metabolism, you'll have to spend all your time on the toilet. But don't worry, it won't last for long. Your body can only withstand a maximum of two hours of such stress and strain, and then BAM! Get up, doofwad. Bad weather doesn't justify taking a day off. What, you don't want to go to work? Then I suggest you work in bed. When NASA was studying how zero gravity impacts a person, they paid $18,000 to a volunteer to lie in a bed for 70 days. Just don't even think about getting up, Arnie. I hired a sniper who will terminate you at your very first try. You will eat, drink, and do everything else while lying down. See ya, buddy! Hey, did you get any sleep? How are you doing? I guess not so cool. It looks like you're gaining weight. All the energy that comes from the food you eat isn't going anywhere. But bed sores, that's bad. Due to high blood pressure, blood stops flowing to the skin. Hold on, old sport. Good news, Arnold. You're close to the record set by Soviet scientists. 370 days in bed. Yeah, you don't look so hot. Every day, you're losing 5% of your muscle mass. On top of that, your bones are also damaged. And due to your lack of mobility, your bones don't repair and they quickly start deteriorating. 
And paradoxically, falling asleep lying down becomes impossible. Without a shift in activity, the brain doesn't know what time of day it is or when it's time to sleep. But this does have its perks. You can watch all your favorite shows over and over again. I'll leave you here now. Enjoy the show, Arnold. <gasps> now you'll be eating only raw meat like a carnivore. Can you feel how quickly your levels of adrenaline and aggression are rising? Of course, it'll be a little difficult for you to chew, as human teeth aren't adapted to eating raw meat. Better cut it into small pieces, like the ancient Mongols did. In fact, the most famous dish made of raw meat, steak tartare, is named after them. Without cereals, vegetables, and fruits, the flow of glucose, which is fuel for your body, will stop. Your liver will start to process its fat stores to meet your body's energy needs, and you'll start to lose weight, up to 5 kilograms a week. Your muscles will start to dehydrate and dry out. That's why a meat diet is so popular among Hollywood celebrities and supermodels. Cholesterol levels in your blood will go up, and, well, let's face it, you'll be at increased risk of heart disease. Amino acids will fill your intestines, and they'll mix with bacteria from your skin, and that will lead to a super grungy body odor. Raw meat does contain some dangerous microorganisms, such as E. coli, salmonella, and listeria, and they can cause you to suffer from diarrhea, vomiting, and just general old heaviness in your stomach. But when your body finally adapts to such food, you'll feel a surge in energy and physical strength. The reason for this is increased testosterone and vitamin D levels. Even Bruce Lee himself, when preparing for fights, liked to have a tall glass of yummy fresh meat smoothie. Our ancient ancestors used to eat raw meat, but their lives changed forever when they figured out how to use fire and began cooking. That cut by two-thirds the time needed for digestion. So energy use moved from the stomach to the brain, and this triggered a cognitive revolution. Humans began to use much more abstract thinking and developed complex languages. And as a result, modern civilization developed. So eat, my dear Arnold, eat! Hey, I see the late night beer bash is a big success. But don't forget, in the morning, you got a conference of below 60 IQ YouTubers. And if you're late, your career is toast. There's no time for the toilet. You gotta hold it, buddy. The bladder comfortably holds 150 to 200 milliliters of fluid, but after 400 to 500 milliliters, you'll feel some pressure. You must have drunk a lot. Eee, looks like the boss is in a bad mood, and for sure he ain't gonna let anyone take bathroom breaks. Fluid is absorbed into the kidneys, then descends through the ureter into the bladder. You're probably feeling a bit stressed, Arno, because now you got to hold the pee in with your muscles. I recommend you don't laugh, Arnold, or sneeze, or cough. Anything like that weakens the muscles, and you might start leaking. Hooray! Break time! You're saved! The average person goes tinkle six to eight times a day. Ooh, no luck there, Arnold. In ancient times, rules of decency allowed people to go wee-wee in public, and the division of toilets into men's and ladies only occurred in 1792. Okay, break's over, buddy. Now it's your turn to give your presentation. If you hold it in for a long time, the bladder walls can stretch, so you can hold even more PP. But this can be dangerous. Bacteria and acids in your urine can crawl back up into your kidneys, causing cystitis and pyelonephritis. It seems, Arnold, that everyone approves of your dissatisfaction with company policy. Come on, Arnold, I know you can hold it a little longer. Just 50 more talks and then you're free. Well, that's it. Time to go home. And Arnold, I advise you not to make any sudden movements. If your bladder is that full, it could pop. Yay, you're almost home. Now we just have to get through the morning rush hour. Move slowly. 
Oh, no! It seems your neighbor's coming, Arnold. You know, the guy who likes to give everyone a big hug when they meet. You look like crap. Wait, are you in a coma? Looking at you, you'd think you're dead, but you're still alive inside. In a coma, you're unable to respond to external stimuli. Because of this, you'll be the best K-pop fan. And you'll be able to listen to the same song on repeat for years. People can be in a coma from a few days to a dozen years. Edward Obara fell into a coma at the age of 16 and spent 42 years this way. According to patients, during a coma, they feel like some kind of matter. They wandered along long and damp corridors, mazes, went through complex oh. mechanisms. The degree of a coma is determined by the Glasgow Coma Scale, where 15 points is clear consciousness and 3 points is brain death. Arnold, they're gonna turn off the machine! Wake up, uh -uh. and I promise no more experiments on you. There's a light at the end of the tunnel. Come on, Arnie, you can do it! These guys are going to do something really useful with your body. Your body consists of 70% water, 24% organic matter, and 6% inorganic substances. In a cucumber, there's also a lot of water, about 85 to 90%. So technically, you're a very emotional cucumber. From the remaining 6% of inorganic elements, many useful things can be created. In your body, there's enough iron to make a nail 6 centimeters long. Your body also contains enough copper to make a pair of headphones. And all of this while you still remain alive. You can even remove most of your internal organs and still go on living. The human body seems fragile, but you can live even without your stomach, spleen, 75% of your liver, 80% of your intestines, one kidney, one lung, and almost every organ located in your pelvis and your inguinal cavity. Of course, you'll hardly be like a cucumber, but it won't kill you. And you will have those free headphones of somewhat dubious quality. But these are all useless things. In fact, the composition of your body includes carbon, hydrogen, sodium, and oxygen. All these chemical elements are also part of dynamite. The hidden explosive power of the human body is equal to 175 grams of TNT. In fact, the strength of the explosion will be in direct proportion to how much you like salty foods during your life. <laughs> Are you dreaming of being Spider-Man? That's cool and all, but just don't tell me you want to get bitten by the spider. It's a black widow. The poison of this spider is 15 times stronger than the poison of a rattlesnake. It's good that they don't attack people first or you'd be sorry. Wait, Arnold. Did you swallow the spider? The path to the stomach through the esophagus is like a steep water slide with a pool of hydrochloric acid at the bottom. And that acid will easily neutralize the spider's venom. If you wash the spider down with a glass of water, it'll reach the stomach in just two seconds. But without any liquid, its fall will take nine seconds. And it has lots of time to bite you. Get ready! Black Widow Venom contains the neurotoxin alpha-latrotoxin. When you're bitten, this neurotoxin attaches to the receptors of nerve cells and causes an influx of calcium there. And this releases hormones that cause convulsions and paralysis. Arnold, you did want superpowers, didn't you? Now your abs can stand even a sledgehammer. And what about a four-hour erection? or eyes that protrude from their sockets. Somehow, I think you look more like a supervillain, Arnold. What is it, Arnie? Do you regret eating the spider? Let's take advantage of the hallucinations and look at some other options. Here's Arnold. He was bitten by a six-eyed sand spider. Its venom causes internal bleeding and tissue necrosis. And there's no antidote. And here's the victim of a bite from the world's most poisonous spider. According to the Guinness Book of Records, the Brazilian wandering spider. Its bite in most cases leads to cardiac arrest. But back to our reality. Fortunately, only 5% of adults die from black widow venom. After 12 to 48 hours of the most terrible torment, the effect of the poison stops. Hey. 
Barney, wake up and get your ass out of bed. I've already packed your suitcase. Here's your plane ticket. Come on, hurry up, let's go. You're going for a nice little weekend at the spa. You'll take baths full of original Coca-Cola, created according to John Pemberton's <laughs> recipe from way back in 1886. This pharmacy mixture made of coca extract absorbs quite well in the blood and can create euphoria in particular doses. And in certain doses, it can kill you. When bathing in this drink, your skin will absorb a large amount of benzomethylagonine. Arnold's feeling quite happy and cheerful. At present, the quantity of this ingredient in your blood doesn't exceed 50 milligrams. A dose of 500 milligrams is already toxic, and 1.2 grams will be lethal. Although the euphoria lasts for 30 minutes, you, Arnie, will again and again want to get this feeling back. No, seriously, dude, that's enough for you. Without a new dose of this spa treatment, Arnold will become aggressive and irritable. This substance reduces the amount of dopamine in the brain, and without it, Arnold feels unhappy. Now, all of his energy is devoted to finding more Coca-Cola. Arnie, I like you better the way you were before. Once in the blood, the coca extract raises your body temperature, narrows your blood vessels, and raises your blood pressure. Whoa. Half a year of such daily cola baths, Arnie, and you'll be burning up from within. Well, you lived a sweet but really short life. <laughs> How do you like Australia, Arnold? <laughs> Don't move! It looks like that's an inland taipan. Hey, dumbass! That's the most venomous land snake on Earth! The taipan's venom is 180 times more toxic than a cobra's. A drop the size of a pinhead can kill 1,000 rats. And 44 milligrams of this venom, which the snake injects in a single bite, can kill over 100 Arnold's. Running is useless. The taipan does not slink away after the first bite like other snakes, but continues with a series of lightning-fast, super-precise attacks to finish off the victim. These 13-millimeter long fangs just injected a powerful hematoxin into your blood that prevents it from clotting. This leads to internal bleeding. You lose control of your body. Your limbs stop obeying. Breathing becomes difficult, and convulsions begin soon after. Oh, don't worry, Arnold, that's not blood. That's urine. Your muscle cells literally begin to dissolve and leave through your kidneys. Due to this, your urine becomes red. If you don't take an antidote within 30 minutes, then for the next eight hours, during what's left of your worthless life, you will experience hellish pain that will make you beg to be finished off sooner. The first part of the simulation is complete. And one more breath. Well done. You've inhaled exactly 2.5 grams of mercury. You can find as much in two mercury thermometers if you breathe in their evaporated mercury when you inhale, just like you did right now. Or if you fill a small room with thermometers and trample them thoroughly, it will take you around one hour and 250,000 thermometers to breathe in the same dose of mercury and die. This is also mercury, doof hole. If you drink a glass of ordinary mercury, the maximum that can happen is you might get a severely upset stomach and diarrhea. But if the mercury is finely fragmented, you will die in pain. When ingested, tiny droplets form hazardous soluble salts. Your body temperature rises to 40 degrees Celsius. You begin to shiver, and your chest and stomach start ripping apart from pain. Also, don't forget to add extreme salivation, vomiting, and diarrhea to the mix. If we don't bump your stomach immediately, death will come after 10 to 30 excruciatingly painful days. The second part of the simulation... Calm down, Chucklehead. This is all for the sake of science. The heart is a pump that makes blood move all around the body at a speed of about 25 miles or 40 kilometers per hour. The path which the blood travels through is more than 100,000 kilometers long. And if all these vessels were laid out in a single line, they would wrap around the globe twice. <sighs> Three, two, one, stop. <laughs> Arnold, did you pee your pants?
It takes 0.4 seconds for the heart to contract and the same to rest. If you add up all the pauses in an average person's life, it turns out that the heart is resting for more than 20 years. Therefore, no one will notice a little pause for just a single nanosecond. But I already figured out how to fix it. Look closely. The heart resembles a two-story house. There are two rooms at the top, called the right and left atria, and below, the ventricles. In its normal mode, the blood from the atrium is pushed into the ventricle with such pressure that the blood could hypothetically shoot out for more than 9 meters or almost 30 feet. Then the ventricle pushes blood into the lungs or the aorta, and life goes on as usual. But if the ventricle stops for at least 0.7 seconds, when all the other parts of the heart are still working, then boom! The amount of blood going through doubles, and it's torn to shreds. Not this time, Arnold. We need you, Arnold. Everybody loves you, right, people? I'm kidding. Nobody cares.